Good morning and welcome to the Norton Natural Schools A-Level History presentation for your taste today, sixth form induction, whatever you want to call it. I am hoping the technology is working. Um, please bear with me if something goes wrong. Uh, if it does, I will endeavour to um, get back online on this link as soon as possible. Uh, if anybody is there uh, listening, then please make yourself known to me. Um, uh, drop me a message, drop me a question, say hi, anything you like. Obviously, if you're watching this uh, on a delayed version, then I may not be able to respond straight away. OK, well, we will move ahead then. Uh, if you can hear some background noise, that's just because of the changeover in lesson. Um, it should settle down pretty quickly. OK, so. Our agenda for today. First of all, we're going to start with some taster videos. Uh, the first one will be on our Russia topic at A level. And our second one will be on our English history uh, topic, uh, the Wars of the Roses. After that, I'll give you some course structure information. And then we'll talk about transition work. And then there is a sort of activity, simulation activity at the end. As I say, at any time in this, if you want to drop me a message, please feel free. I'll do my best to get to you uh, and your question as soon as possible. OK, so we move on to our first item on the agenda. Taste a video for Russia. I hope you've got sound for this. Uh, if not, then feel free to play your own music or whistle a tune. Fingers crossed. Let's go. OK, that was our first taster video of uh, two and uh, that was uh, looking at our Russia topic, uh, more of which later on or more detail uh, on that later on. And we'll now move on to our 
second taster video for our second major topic at A level, English history, 15th century Wars of the Roses. Fingers crossed it works. Haha, <laughs> let's try that again. OK, fingers crossed that worked. That was our second taster day video and we now move on to. Course information. OK, well, uh, what can I tell you about the NKS history A level? Um, you can see on the board a summary. We follow the AQA exam board. Which has three course components. Over here on the left, you can see Paper one, uh, an exam component. Uh, this is Russia 1855 to 1964. This is uh, this exam at the end of year 13 is worth 40%. And this is taught by Mr. Trafford. This is a really interesting paper. This is uh, the, the paper I, I, I hope that was summed up by the, the Taste of Day video at the beginning. It tends to be the most uh, popular of the uh, components at A level and uh, yeah, fascinating uh, study of a, 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 a pretty backward monarchical government and society transitioning through revolution and war to a, uh, a world superpower and a nuclear superpower at that. So uh, a fascinating study of, uh, of autocracy, dictatorship and totalitarianism. OK, on to paper two. Uh, England 1450 to 99. This is a, a you can notice here some much shorter uh, historical study only uh, 49 years. This is the depth study. And obviously that's in comparison with the Russia topic, which is a much longer period of time. So with the depth study, we go into much greater detail, uh, much sort of uh, more granular uh, detail on a year by year basis. And as you can see, this is an examined unit and it is worth 40% and that's taught by me, Mr. Gray. It's not probably not a topic, uh, an area that many of you have uh, thought about before. Um, it's it's not some it's we deliberately chose something that we hadn't really covered um, earlier on in the school or don't really cover in any depth. And uh, I think it's a hidden gem of a historical topic. Uh, not many people know that much about it, so it's, it's refreshing. And hopefully the, the video got across to you the, the sort of excitement of this topic, the, um, the, the, the sort of uh, uh, drama of it. And uh, the video there was trying to you know, link to the fact that uh, the Game of Thrones books and TV show, uh, don't worry if you haven't watched them or read them, but um, you know, it was very much inspired by by English history of this period, Wars of the Roses. Many of the characters were comparable to 
um, actual figures who lived uh, in England at that time. And I think it's important to have some, uh, uh, you know, English history in there, some national history. And there's also a fair amount of local history involved in this. You know, we do mention Ashford a couple of times. We certainly talk about Kent a lot. Uh, its coastline and Canterbury, um, you know, so it's that local element that you just don't get from the Russia paper. And as I look out my office window now, if I strain my neck, I can see uh, St. Mary's Church in Ashford, which was, uh, you know, built by a fairly prominent figure uh, in, in uh, the Wars of the Roses, um, uh, 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 Sir John Fogg, uh, back in the 1400s. So there's a real local element to, to this topic. The third element is the coursework, um, more commonly known these days as the non-examined assessment, the NEA. And as you can see here, we are looking at uh, the United States of America, the USA and their foreign policy in particular from 1898 to 2001. What do we mean by foreign policy? We mean how they interact with other countries, uh, whether it be diplomacy, uh, trade, uh, warfare, uh, alliances or lack of uh, interventionism, isolationism, those types of things. Uh, so it's it's something uh, slightly different from the other two. Um, you know, there's not much foreign policy in the Russia paper. There's a bit of foreign policy in the English paper, um, but you know, this, this one is a, again a fascinating study of a country um, evolving. Um, you know, changing a great deal again from a, a fairly isolationist power, a great power, no doubt, by 1898, but, uh, you know, an isolationist, a sleeping giant, if you like, um, which then emerges over the course of the 20th century to be uh, a, a superpower, you know, and to be locked into that conflict, the Cold War conflict with Russia in a similar time period. Uh, I teach that course and uh, is a, a 4,500 word essay that you have to write for that. And that essay is worth 20% of the entire A level. Uh, so, you know, the exams are, are taken at the end of year 13. Of course, you have mock exams, timed questions all the way through, but all of those are, are internal and sort of practice to, to be, you know, to, to prepare for the final exams at the end of year 13. The coursework is marked internally, moderated externally. Um, and, uh, you know, we normally get that uh, submitted by the autumn, uh, the sort of uh, term two, autumn term, November, December ish of year 13. If as you go uh, through this, if you think of any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to, uh, to, to send me an email or drop me a message in the message board on Teams. Um, I'll put my email address up at, uh, at the end of the presentation think that's it on that one. I'll just add this point. I, I, I really like the AQA uh, structure of um, uh, of their A-level history. I think I prefer it to Edexcel, which you get in some other schools and colleges. Um, uh, the thing I really like about this is that there are only two exams. So it means, uh, you know, effectively that means two exam topics. Um, I think Edexcel has three plus a coursework. Uh, so with the two exams, it means you can go into greater depth on those topics. Um, you don't feel like you're just skimming the surface and you've only got two exams to revise for. Uh, yes, they carry greater weight than those three, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think on balance, this is this is the right approach to take. OK, we will move on to the next slide. OK, we're going to talk about transition work and hopefully uh, you have a copy of the uh, NKS sixth form transition uh, work document. Uh, this, I believe, has been sent out to you by uh, Mr. Messenger. If it hasn't yet, then don't worry, it will be soon. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure it will have been sent out in an email to you or it'll be uh, there on the on the school website. And if not, then feel free to email. Uh, Mr. Messenger for that. Uh, in that booklet, you will find transition work for uh, all of your subjects. And this is really to um, give you things to do over the summer to help you prepare uh, to get you on the right track. And it can make a big difference. You know, I always notice in September the students who have given themselves an advantage, um, you know, by, by getting ahead of the game an unfair advantage, who knows, by getting a, a cheeky advantage on the other students. And it means that they have 
they're further ahead by uh, September, that they understand. Uh, and if they've made any mistakes or got any mis misunderstandings, I can deal with them straight away. So it, it can be a really, really uh, good idea to do some do some this uh, this transition work. So let's go through it. I think I've just uh, screenshotted the work and I will uh, just quickly go through a few of these things. Um, don't feel like you have to read every word on this screen. As I say, this is in the in the transition uh, notebook. Um, on the left hand side here, you can see we have some Russia component one, paper one, Russia transition work over here. And the Wars of the Roses over here on the right. And then a couple of things here for the, uh, the, the coursework topic. And a little note here about bonus materials at the bottom right. Uh, these links, uh, you won't uh, doubt, I don't, I'm not sure if you'll be able to click them on your screen as you're watching this. Uh, obviously I can, but I'm not sure if you can or not. Um, but certainly you'll, they'll, be, they'll be clickable on the, on the document, um, the actual transition document. And uh, Mr. Messenger, uh, sorry, Mr. Trafford rather, has given you a few bullet point things to think about here. Um, some, some questions to think about, some uh, uh, questions to research. He's given you a couple of good introductory clips to watch and uh, he's given you his email address there. Feel free to email him about all things Russia. Also, we have here introductory reading. These are quote unquote proper history books uh, by well-known historians of Russian history. And um, there is no compulsion to buy these. You don't have to buy them. Uh, we only put them up there because lots of students do like to buy uh, uh, books, uh, history books and read them. And you can, of course, like I say, get yourself a, a good advantage over the other students if you engage in wider reading. And if you, um, you know, if you're doing history at A level, you should be prepared to do plenty of reading. OK, on the right hand side here for the Wars of the Roses component. Uh, again, a few bullet point things for you to look at and think about some research and likewise some links. I'm a big fan of, uh, yes, of wider reading and proper history books, uh, but also I'm, I'm a big fan of using decent documentaries and podcasts and, and uh, Mr. Trafford is obviously as well. Uh, but, you know, I've included some links to some really I think uh, uh, useful videos to get you started, uh, uh, videos, podcasts, interviews with historians, that kind of thing. Uh, as you can see, we have my email address uh, here on the board. Again, I'll put it up on the screen at the end. And as well as these uh, uh, clips and podcasts, we have some introductory reading bullet points down here. Um, the uh, Lauren Johnson is particularly good for the first part of the course. That was only published, I think, a year, 18 months ago, something like that. And uh, the, the others are sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, really good introductions to, to the period. Likewise, USA as a world power down here on the left. A few clips to get you started. And then on the right hand side, if you run out of things to do, if you do all of that stuff over the summer and you want some more, uh, and believe me, I do, you know, I tend to get a handful of emails over the summer saying, you know, I'm, I'm well into this, uh, uh, this book. I've watched all the clips and I'd like uh, some more ideas of things to keep me busy. Believe it or not, that does happen. Um, and those students tend to be the ones that are further ahead in September. So if that's you, feel free to email me. But of course, I understand summer is summer and, uh, you know, there, there's other things to do and other um, other things to uh, keep you busy over the summer. OK, so that's transition work. <laughs>